Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Conservancy Connections. My name is Kelly, and I am the coastal educator at the Bald Head Island Conservancy. We are a small environmental nonprofit located on Bald Head Island, North Carolina. We specialize in sea turtle conservation, barrier island studies, education programs, and so much more. But we can't get onto the island, so we are working from home at this time, so we decided to bring a little bit of the conservancy to you guys. So if you guys have any questions at all during this video, I'm going to be hanging out in the comments section down below. Please ask away, I love answering questions to the best of my ability. If you guys want to support the Conservancy at all, we have a donation link down below as well. If you guys want to donate anything to us, we would be over the moon happy with it. Please just put education in the comments so that we know where the money is coming from. Let's start out with Happy Earth Week to everyone out there. This is the 50th anniversary of Earth Week, so I decided to do videos on animals that have once been endangered and are on their way back to having a healthy population due to conservation efforts. And one of my favorite stories is the American alligator. So for Earth Week, we challenge you guys to post your very favorite picture of nature and tell us how you are going to be going green during this Earth Week. You can post it in the comments section down below and we can't wait to see how you are going green. And without further ado, let's learn about alligators. American alligators are found in almost all of North Carolina. Basically anywhere you can find a freshwater pond, there is more than likely an alligator in that pond. Alligators are reptiles, and reptiles are one of my favorite animals. To be classified as a reptile, these animals need to be vertebrates, they have to be ectotherms, they have to have scales, they have to lay eggs, and they have to breathe air. We talk about these traits in reptiles in previous videos, so with our snakes and our turtles, but our alligators are also reptiles as well. Our alligators are vertebrates, so they do have that backbone just like our turtles and snakes. They lay eggs, and our, their eggs are very similar to our turtle eggs, so they are pretty soft, so if you feel this part of your hand right here, that is very similar to what our, our alligator eggs look like. They are oblong, like a chicken egg. They breathe air even though they spend most of their time in the water. They have scales covering their body, and they are ectotherms. Ectotherm is a fancy word for cold-blooded, but we don't want to call our alligators cold-blooded because some people think that that means cold-hearted, and we don't want people to dislike our alligators. They are very important to the ecosystem. Our alligators have a really cool story to them. A long time ago, a couple decades ago, people used to kill alligators all the time. They might have killed it for uh, their skin, if you guys have ever seen alligator skin shoes or purses, sometimes they were killed for that, sometimes they were killed for their meat, and sometimes it was also just because people thought that they were mean and they didn't want them in their ponds. So in 1973, our alligators' populations were so low that they were classified as an endangered species. So the rules for an endangered species means that you are no longer able to hunt and kill these animals. You no longer can import and export these animals. This means that they cannot be shipped overseas or really even in between states. It means that we have to protect the areas that they live in, so that means that we would have to protect those ponds that were known habitats for alligators. And it also meant that recovery plans were put into place. In some species, this means that a breeding program is put into place in sanctuaries or zoos. But with our alligators, luckily, they were able to bounce back on their own. And luckily for our alligators, they were taken off the endangered species list in 1987. So that is pretty quick, and that means that these laws were really working the populations had boomed. So I just think that it is so cool that these environmental processes really worked for an animal that we all really know. It's not some animal that no one has heard about. Everybody knows about the American alligator. So American alligators are really cool animals as well. They are one of the best moms in the animal kingdom. Most reptiles lay their eggs, leave them, and never come back. Some snakes actually sit on their nests, but they still don't really care for their young. Our turtles lay their eggs and <laughs> never see them again. But our alligators take care of their babies for a couple years after they're hatched. So right here is a baby alligator. 
You can tell that it is a baby just by looking at it, honestly. You can see that it's very small. But one thing that's very different about them are these stripes. You can see these stripes going up and down the babies, and this is so that they're really camouflaged when they're young. Not many animals are going to hunt a full-grown alligator, but these babies are able to be eaten by larger predators, even larger fish. So they have these stripes to have them blend into the reeds that are in the ponds and the rivers that they're living in, and it really helps break them up so they're able to hide. Something also that's really cool is that our, the moms will take care of the babies, so the babies will make a noise, and it will call the moms to the area, and the mom will scare away the predators. These, these mother alligators are very large, so they are very good at intimidating other animals. Sometimes they'll even have their babies hop into their mouth to ride around, and once they're too big to do that, they will ride around on their back. So if you do see an alligator that is relatively small, and it still has these stripes, there is most likely a mother alligator somewhere nearby. They are ectotherms, so they do not want to spend energy on something that is not necessary. They spend all that time basking in the sun, they don't just want to throw it away. So alligators are not known for chasing people unless they are protecting their young. I know a lot of people say that you should zigzag away from an alligator. Most likely the alligator is just going to run to the water that's right next to you, so you should probably step away from the water. But if an alligator does chase you, which really does not happen, you should most likely just walk quickly in one direction. Our alligators are not very fast on land, they do not have the biggest legs, and they can support their body, but they can't run very fast. They are the fastest in the water, so you can see this really large tail that is half the size of their body. And it's really powerful and really strong. They can swim around 20 miles per hour while they can only run around 10, and those are in very short bursts. So they are going to most likely stay in the water because that is where they have the best hunting. Since they live in the water, they also have a protective coating on their eyes. And this is called a nictitating membrane. Can you guys say that with me? Nictitating membrane. And this is almost like goggles that go over their eyes. And these goggles go over so that they're able to close their eyelids so the water does not hurt their eyes and they can continue to hunt. If you do shine a flashlight around a pond at night and you see red eye shine, that is most likely an alligator because that nictitating membrane glows red instead of yellow. Alligators also have really cool teeth. They are carnivores, so they like to eat meat. When they're very young, they are mostly eating small invertebrates or little fish that they can catch, but whenever they are larger, they can eat things that are about the size of their mouth and sometimes larger. I have a alligator tooth right here. So this is what they look like. This is relatively uh, small for an alligator tooth, but I just wanted to show you what they look like on the inside. So as you can tell, they are hollow. And a lot of people know that sharks have lots of teeth and they are constantly cycling through, so they always have sharp teeth. But alligators do this as well, but in a different way. Our alligators grow their teeth kind of like a stack of cups. So if this tooth that is on top gets too broken, too, too dull, it's going to fall out and there's still another tooth underneath it. So that's very sharp, so they are able to continue using those teeth. Since they are those apex predators, they need to have really sharp teeth so that they're able to hunt. There's also a really cool trick to tell how big an alligator is. So they like to hang out in the water kind of like this, just with their heads showing. And if you count the inches estimated, please don't get close enough to tell, to really put a ruler on their face. You can tell how long an alligator is just by looking at its head. The inches from their eyes to their snout it is approximately equal to the amount of feet long this alligator is. So if an alligator is only six inches from their, their eyes to their nose, that's still a six foot alligator. And that's only a juvenile, but that's still pretty big. Male alligators can get to be a rat. They, 
they average about 12 feet long. That means that just their tail is the average size of a human, so they can get very large, while the females really only get to be about 9 feet long, which is still a very large animal. You can find these alligators in so many different areas. Most ponds have them, but one place that they are really well known for being found are golf courses. So you can see that this guy is just walking on along around golf courses. They like to hang out there because there's plenty of ponds for them to choose from, and sometimes they will walk from pond to pond just to see what else is out there. These alligators can only live in fresh water. It is, uh, salt water is not good for their skin. Sometimes they will go into the ocean just for a little bit of a bath to, uh, to clean off all of the bacteria that might be on their scales, but they are only going to be living in the fresh water. So a lot of people think that they are going to be found in our salt marshes around the island, but they are only going to be hanging out there for a short amount of time. A lot of people ask me what is the difference between a crocodile and an alligator. Uh, there are a couple really easy ways to tell the difference between these animals. The easiest way is just to think about where you are. So crocodiles do not live in anywhere in the U.S. besides the southern tip of Florida. So if you are in North Carolina or even Georgia, you are most likely seeing an alligator. That is the easiest way to tell the difference. Another way that you could tell the difference is by their just their size. Al or crocodiles can get to be larger than alligators. And then you could tell by the way their snout is shaped. So alligators have a U-shaped snout and crocodiles have more of a V. But sometimes, if, especially if they are young, this can look very similar. Another way that you can tell is by looking at the way that their jaws are placed. So here is a picture of an alligator. You can tell that all of their teeth are coming from one direction, especially that large one. And this is a picture of a crocodile. Their teeth are a little bit more jagged. They're kind of coming from the top and the bottom. And that really large tooth is coming from the bottom. So this is an easy way to tell which one is which, but the easiest one is just to think about where you are living. So alligators are just such cool animals and they have such an important story. And that is all that I have for you guys today. I wanna to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Keep your eye out for the next one coming out. If you guys do want to support the Conservancy, we have a donation link down below. Please write education in the comments section so that we know where it is coming from. And I want to thank all of you guys from the very bottom of my heart, and happy Earth Week, everyone. Bye.